All right, back for round two after a little dinner. I'll start this round. Ron, I want to ask you what it, what it felt like um, after being let go from Ebonite and then the months after that and what it felt like from the time you, let go, you got let go in between the time you started CTD and your, your thought process of becoming an entrepreneur. It sucked. You know, my, my whole life I wanted to design bowling balls. I'm living that dream and then that dream's gone. I think that I was a little bit fortunate because I, I knew the opportunity, I knew the possibility for that to happen was legit. Um, the company had been losing money and they had been letting people go every February for the prior two years. So I knew that the opportunity for it to be me, if, it was, if that was to continue, would, be, would happen because it was gonna be between me or my boss but my boss was in the meetings to decide who was going to be let go or what they were going to cut, right? So I'd made some strategic decisions with my family to make sure that if that was the case, that we would be okay. Um, and this was about a year in advance. Um, I, I, I made some changes, made some plans, did some things to make sure that if it happened the next year, that we'd be okay. And I'll, I'll tell you, being let go was very, even though I kind of had an idea that that was a possibility, you don't believe it until it happens. Right. And it's very shocking and it's very depressing. And, you know, you feel, you, you kind of feel invincible, right? Because I'm one of four people in the world that do this thing. So if you're going to let people go, you're not letting me go because who's going to design your bowling balls? And they're like, well, we're letting you go. And you're like, Oh, wow, this is like really sucks. And now you pigeonhole yourself because you're one of four people that designs bowling balls, which really means you can't do nothing else, right? Like, that's what you do. And what I had done to kind of figure out what was next was, I, I mean, I was lost, bro. I was lost for a little bit. Um, I reached out to the PBA, and they let me do some extra frame stuff. I would go to the extra frame events and commentate. So that was cool, but that wasn't going to, like... I mean, I'm making over $100,000 of that, but I, so <laughs> I'm like getting that there. Yeah. Um, so I looked at, you know, going into a regular engineering field and that just, you know, you're back to square one. Mm -hmm. It's great that you design bowling balls, but now you're going to work on trains or planes or whatever. And that's a whole different skill set. So you're entry level one. I'm not doing that. Um, but what I did was I actually had a, a on my, at my house, I took these gigantic post-it notes and I wrote down <coughs> options to, of places to work for. I had USB-C on there. I had Storm on there. I had all these companies, all these different options. And then every day, I'd come down and I would just cross one off. And ultimately, I, I, had, a head, I had had a headhunter that was looking for a job and was getting opportunities, but nothing I was passionate about. And I was passionate about this bowling thing. Like, I love doing this bowling thing, right? So it was like, well, you know, like these other things don't, don't make me passionate. So, you know, I got to do something I'm passionate about. And uh, at the time, I'm pretty broke because now I, I have no income. I got, I'm getting like $400 every two weeks or one week, I don't remember, from uh, unemployment. I mean, it's just nothing. Like I didn't even pay groceries, but whatever. Um, and so what I'm doing is I'm, I'm hustling my living, bowling and sponsoring. So me and this guy, great bowler, um, we're going to tournaments and I'm paying for everything because I have a little bit of money, but just not a lot. I'm, I'm paying for him to bowl. He's a great bowler. He makes money. We you know, take the money back and split it 50-50. And, um, and I lived like that for probably six months. And, and we won a doubles tournament together, so that was really cool. And uh, I mean, I mean, it was enough to live on, but it wasn't sustainable long term. So, you know, it kind of hit me that like maybe, you know, I want to do this bowling thing, but I don't know what to do. And it was kind of like, well, maybe we can get into another portion portion of the business. And uh, it so worked out that we 
put a put an option put an option on Facebook about a backpack, and the backpack had all these products in it, and one of the products in it was a ball cleaner. And I'm like, I can make my own ball cleaner. So we end up doing that, making our own ball cleaner, and then you know, away we go. So that's kind of what happened. And Fabuloso started it all, huh? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's funny, right? So the, the Fabuloso thing was, was, it was funny to me because we heard that so much. And I was like, why? Like, why are we getting, you know, Fabuloso? Why is it so prevalent? And purple stuff is not Fabuloso. Like, we can get up right this second. I can take you into the, into the back and I will show, I will do that. So just leave it running. We will go right now. Just me and you in the back, and I will show you where the purple stuff comes from. Okay? Okay. We'll be right back. You guys can have a chat, chit chat, and then we'll, we'll see what happens. <laughs> All right? Come on. I, I don't get the joy. Come on. You can jump. You can come too. So I just got to sit here and you talk to sit myself. You got to talk for two seconds. It's only take two seconds. Let's go ahead and talk. Well, how about that right in? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. We appreciate you tuning in. We'll be back once they uh, get back from seeing where the purple stuff comes from. Stay tuned. Leave me out in the cold. They leave me out in the cold. All right, they're coming back in. We're back. Leaving me out in the cold. Yep. yep. So, someone had two. What's the verdict? That is definitely not fabulous. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, we never thought that anyway, but you know. Right. We got a, got a jab. Right. So I'm gonna tell you something about that though, because this this actually does kind of it does kind of bother me a little bit. So, there was a manufacturer that had a guy who was a part of their technical committee and he basically answered when people sent emails in he answered the technical emails and he said that purple stuff was fabuloso and i know that because one of the people that i know sent me his email with his name attached to it it was blah 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 technical director and that was this whole building of this whole fabuloso thing is you know it's frustrating on one half, but the other half of it it was kind of funny because it was like, well, if you actually, I actually shot a video using Fabuloso. I was gonna, I was gonna, I was like, well, this is, I'll just, I'll show everybody the whole world. We do this with everything else we do. And I have, a, I have a mentor, and he said, he said, don't put, don't publish that video. And I said, why not? I said, we can show people that purple stuff is not Fabuloso, and as a matter of fact, if you use Fabuloso on your bowling ball. It skates and doesn't hook. I can prove that. And he goes, how many people do you think really care? And I said, maybe one or two percent. He said, so 98% of the people don't care if it is fabuloso. I said, probably. He said, so you're going to make a video to talk to 2% of the people that don't like you anyway. So no matter what you say, they don't like you. So why would you pander to that? And I was like, all right, so that video stays unlisted in private. But that's kind of, that's kind of how that happened. Hmm. You heard Fabuloso? No. What'd you think? I mean, I don't really use ball cleaner, so. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, if it is or it isn't. Not like not using it. I, don't, I mean, like it is what it is. Like I literally just smelt and saw what it was. So no, it's not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What did you think? I mean, you. I mean, you got the passion. What did you think? Well, again, I don't use ball cleaner either. So I was like, well, if it is, then he's really good at selling stuff to I, people. Yeah, I mean, like you can't knock. <laughs> no, no matter what, you can't knock the hustle. Cause right. I saw back in the day, before all of this, what it what it was making. So 
whatever it is, is obviously something that was working. Like, how much money are people going to spend on something that doesn't work? Right. Yeah. So, I mean, it didn't affect me in any way. Um, I was just like, okay, whatever. If it is, great. He's selling a lot of it. <laughs> so... If he is selling Fabuloso, they're happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm curious to see what you what did you think about that? I mean, I never I never had any any doubts. Like I mean I obviously I saw it because I was I got in pretty close to the beginning. So I was able to see the progression of purple stuff, TR, HM, all of that. But I never, personally, I never had a doubt of it. I, I mean, obviously, I knew. You go on any forum and search Ron Hicklin, CTD, whatever, you're going to find something. You're going to find something that says, yeah, this is fabulous with alcohol in it or fabulous with watered down. But at the end of the day, once you understand what is in it you see the safety sheets there's no question and I feel like there's a certain certain level of ignorance if you say yeah this is fabuloso but you have nothing to back up your claim so there's really only one person that can prove what it is and that's the person that's making it so and that goes yeah. the same with Bowling balls. We don't know what it is. The person who actually makes the bowling balls knows what it is. Right, right. It's a, any other right. product, you know. So, I want to ask another question, and I think this would be... It would be good to see two different opinions here. So, the Radical video. EJ puts his cup down immediately. <laughs> I mean, we know what we're talking about. Yeah. The, the radical video about about motive, right? So I, I'm kind of curious because two different company guys. What's your thoughts? What's your opinions on that? What 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 went through your mind? Since y'all called me fabuloso, so um, I'd say since it's really with him. Uh, I mean, I looked at it as if you want to call it if. Them trying to say that they have a bad product. You're sure, like, I don't understand why you would basically try to sh compare it to a quote unquote bad product instead of just showing, like, here's my ball and use my facts. Because I've all, I don't know, ball videos to me have always been a little iffy. I think we can, like, you know, <laughs> I, I, yeah. all can agree on that. Yeah. Um, I mean, I just, like, I thought it was stupid. I feel like if, if you've got, if that's the route you've got to take to try to sell any product, irrelevant being bowling balls or not, then something on your your side of things is not what it should be. Like mm -hmm. you're so worried about their product that you're not really focusing on maximizing yours. I mean, I thought the video was stupid. I I think most of the videos that come out are stupid, but I thought it was funny. Yeah, I, I mean, funny I thought it was like, yeah, because it's. I mean, to me, it's a, it's a, uh, you know, it's a, a sign of in, endearment, basically, because, like, why would why did they pick us? Why is it our products? Well, is it because they're the little guy? They're the little guy, and there's a history. There's a, there's you know a thing that a lot of people don't really realize is that the the motive guys made the cores for Brunswick for twenty years. Well, Brunswick moves to Mexico, they're out of a job, so there's a there's a not a feud, but there's not not much love lost between the two. So they pick us because oh, we're, ours is better than theirs. Okay. That's on a machine. You prove that a machine can do it better. Not realistic, you know, like a machine you use for testing, but you, we've talked about that before where 
you know, when, when you were working here of testing bowling balls only here, you only get results of what would happen only here. Right. Like you have to test bowling balls everywhere. So if you're only using a machine, you're not going to get any realistic data, in, in my opinion. And I'm sure you probably agree with that. You have to have different people throwing the bowling balls that do different things at different bowling centers of different oils and different lane conditions, different I'm, lane surfaces. Like, you know, we repeat a lot and we're not going to repeat the, what a machine. It's, like you said, it's not realistic. It's not. We're going to be so, close, but we're not going to be that close. Well, and, and you can make a machine do exactly what you tell it to do. True. And you can make the results close enough that it looks like, I don't know saying that's what they did, but you, it's, you can make them close enough to make them look really different. It wasn't a live demonstration. Right. So the opportunity to yeah, cherry yeah, pick shots. Do something or, like that. Cherry pick shots, manipulate the data. Right. It's, it's there. I'm not saying that's what they did, but I mean, it's, it's, it could happen. So, you know, it, to me, it's just, you know, I think they're maybe threatened by the advancements that we have made. Not that saying that we're the greatest company that's ever made bowling balls in the history of bowling. I think the products are absolutely fantastic. Obviously, I've had a great career throwing these bowling balls, and I have nothing bad to say, obviously. But I, I just, in them doing what they did, uh, it just makes me feel like that they're threatened by the things that we have done over the past couple of years at, at the company and the advancements that they've been able to make with cover stocks, especially. And um, I just, I, I feel like they just are a little threatened by that. And that's why they, another reason why they chose us rather than Storm or Roto or, you know, 900 or. Well, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah now we have, they're swag now. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think. I think from a video perspective, like the past videos that they did, their perception and reality videos, they're decent. Like they actually show you a comparison mm -hmm. and they don't knock a product. But the difference is when you line up ball A, your ball, and ball B, somebody else's ball, and you would throw ball B on top of ball A, it's going to be different. Mm -hmm. And when you... Like, the main thing they talk about is deflection, deflection, deflection. It's like, well, yeah, what do you, you think is going to happen? I mean, if you're throwing two completely different balls from two completely different companies, they're not going to be the same. I don't care who you are. But when you get to the point where ball A is hitting the pocket, but ball B is... Not making it up the hill. Deflecting, not making it up the hill. Yeah. The normal person is going to be like, okay... Let's do something different. Yeah. If you're strictly comparing them, great. But it's when you start talking about this ball from this other company just couldn't get up the hill or hit the pocket but left <laughs> three flat tens in a row. I mean, I just... What do you think? I mean, I've been a fan of the perception versus reality videos because I felt like it was a way to kind of quantify what they were seeing. I thought that that video was absolutely garbage. I think it was garbage because instead of just letting the video be the video and show the shape that it was going to show, it was all this additional commentary. It was all this additional petty talking. It was all this additional added stuff that just served to degrade bowling. Mm -hmm. There was nothing positive about saying the comments that were being said there. If you want to show the balls and go, my ball looks more than your ball, I'm okay with that. Because that's true. I mean, if it's true, it's true. I'm not going to argue that. Whatever. But the moment I start taking that and <laughs> using that as the leverage to badmouth and degrade you, now all of a sudden you're just being petty. Mm -hmm. And not only are you being petty, but you're, not, you're hurting everybody. You know, I, I read through the comments and I'm watching, which, which is interesting to me because there's more dislikes than likes in the video. And I'm watching people comment. And there's a, there's a comment about CTD in there. Guys like, well, this is the CTD people going in here and disliking the video. That's what's going on. And I'm like, and the reason why is because two videos earlier, there were some videos that, that were basically throwing shade our way, which what's funny about that is, is that wasn't true. Like, 
the people that watch the, those videos are the people that subscribe to that channel, which are fans of that channel. Right. So the people that are disliking that video are those exact same people. Yeah. You know, so it's like, for me, the reason why I had more dislikes than likes is because the radical people didn't like that video. You made a crappy video. And instead of saying, you know what, it was a mistake, you know, we're going to move on, it was like, well, no, let's double down on this. And oh, the, you know, at the end of the day, it's not good for bullying. And some of their other videos that they did that were perception versus reality, I thought were really good. I thought they did a really good job. They just showed the data, it was the data, and that's what it was. And, you know, nobody's perfect either. You know, you're, you're going to make mistakes. Anytime you put yourself out there like that, the opportunity for you to, you know, get smacked in the face is there. That's a fear <laughs> that I have because I put myself out there like that. And, that's going to happen to me at some point. I'm going to say or do something that's stupid. Mm-hmm. We all do. <laughs> and and, <At> some point. <laughs> and I hope that I have an, enough close enough friends to be like, Ron, what, what you, you did there was stupid, bro. You need to go fix that. And, you know, that's why, like, having friends like you guys, having people that, that we can have conversations with and, and, and being able to, to, to get a reality check. Because there's times when, you know, I'm... Blah, 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 look at us, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? And that's not really what you want to, mm-hmm. to be or what you want to portray. That's not the goal. The goal, honestly, is simple. It's to grow bowling. That's it. Mm-hmm. Right? Period, point blank, end of story. That didn't help grow bowling, so I didn't like it. Yeah, because when we go bowling, uh, we all win. Everybody wins. Everybody wins. When bowling gets bigger, we all win. Moda wins. Radical wins. Storm wins. You win. I win. It's a win, 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 brother. Yep. <laughs> All right. So, I mean, I think that's probably a good spot, you know, to kind of wrap this little session up right here. Um, so, we'll take a little break and we'll do it again.